Hey guys, it's Tiana with The Verge. I'm here on the Apple campus in Cupertino. Apple just released a new line of MacBook Pros, which are super cool. Uh, they take a lot of inspiration from the MacBook, the super small and thin MacBook, but now they brought it to the Pro size with Pro horsepower. But the big feature is the new touch strip on the mid-level 13-inch MacBook Pro and the 15-inch MacBook Pro. So here, uh, you can see I'm just in the Finder, and what you've got is kind of like the classic function keys shown up on the screen. But if I press right here, you see this opens into the classic one. I can close it. I can press right here on the volume keys. And instead of that, I get a touch display that's controlling the volume. That's neat. That's fine. But the real action here is that this is context sensitive to apps. Uh, so I'm hearing this message. I want to type. I want to send an emoji. I push the emoji key. And now I have a full access to emojis and a touch display. Uh, just like you, like you would on a phone. The move here is really bringing a lot of touch elements that we've seen on phones and tablets to the Mac without putting in a touch screen. So here you can see the keyboard is going to make typing selection uh, suggestions, autocorrect suggestions as I type, uh, which is pretty neat. You can see it's just letting me type right with the keyboard, just like the smart keyboard on an iPhone. But instead of touching the screen, I'm touching this touch panel here. There's all kinds of other things you can do with this. I can open QuickTime. This is a video. You can see I can scrub in the video just by touching the thing. I can hit play. Uh, I can scrub back and forth. That's pretty cool. Uh, they've got photos here. So I can switch over to photos. So photos is open here. I can scroll through all the photos I have. Um, I can press the edit key right here. I can click filters. And now I can bang through photo filters right on the keyboard without having to go to the screen and use the mouse over here. I can push this button. I can set the cropping. I can, do, I can rotate the photos right with the touchpad, uh, or I'm sorry, right with the touch bar, right on the keyboard without lifting my hand here. So a very interesting way of bringing touch controls to the keyboard without actually bringing touch to the screen. Apple is also showing off some third party apps. Uh, so here I've got Word. You can see Word has a bunch of editing controls. I can hit bold. Now I'm typing in bold. I can hit italic. All the classic stuff that you would see uh, usually in the menu bar brought down right in front of your screen. When you open Safari, uh, you get a bunch of favorites in the new tab window. It also remembers all your tabs. So you can switch tabs just by touching the screen. Uh, you can also hit search right from uh, the bar. When you hit search, it brings up a bunch of your favorites here. I think it's really funny that Apple has given itself the biggest button with its own name spelled out, and nobody else gets that button on screen. So that's pretty neat. And then on a system level, you can hit the Siri button. You get Siri. Siri can barely hear me right now. What's going on, Siri? She doesn't understand because it's super loud in here. And uh, over here on the touch bar, uh, you have the touch ID sensor and the power button. So that's just a regular power button. Siri is just trying to listen to me. So uh, if I hold this down, it's actually a button over here. If I hold it down, you can see I get, I get a bunch of things happening. Uh, and it's touch ID. So if I try to buy something or if I had Apple Base set up, I could just touch right here uh, and it would be touch ID and either log me in or approve an Apple Pay purchase. So that is the big touch bar. You can also see this trackpad is absolutely massive. It's two times as big as the previous trackpads. Um, it's force touch. It doesn't move. It just has the Taptic engine underneath it. The keyboard is uh, really much shallower than the current MacBook Pro. It's not quite as shallow as the MacBook, but it's definitely noticeably shallower. It feels really fast. I like a shallow keyboard, so it's fine. Um, but you're going to have to try it out and feel it for yourself. And then along the side, hey oh, there's a headphone jack. It's my favorite. And then you've got four, what Apple is calling Thunderbolt 3 ports. Uh, they're actually the same form factor as USB-C. So you get uh, two on this side, um, and then two over here. All of these are also charging ports because they are, in fact, the same form factor as USB-C. So you can plug in any charger. All four ports will charge. They'll all be Thunderbolt 3. And then all of your docks and accessories can plug right in. So just the four Thunderbolt 3 ports that are the same form factor as USB-C and a headphone jack. Nothing very special on the bottom. This whole thing is very thin and light. It's four pounds. Uh, it feels incredibly light to me. I am a current 15-inch MacBook Pro user. Uh, this thing feels great. 
the retina display is thinner than before. It's 65% brighter. All in all, a really solid update to the MacBook Pro with a really new, interesting UI convention and a touch bar that it seems like third-party developers are going to take a lot of advantage of uh, as they create UIs for touch on the Mac that don't rely on a touch screen. So the new MacBook starts at $14.99 for a model without the touch bar that's 13 inch with two Thunderbolt 3 ports and no touch bar, just regular function keys. And it goes up, the 15 inch model here with the quad core processor goes up to about $23.99. There's a million custom configuration options in there. I'm sure you can make this thing as expensive or as inexpensive as you want. Uh, but the cheap ones start shipping uh, really soon, like tomorrow. These bigger ones with a touch bar uh, start shipping in two to three weeks, and we will have a review very soon. So the new MacBook Pro is really cool, but there's one thing that's sad. The Apple logo doesn't glow anymore, which is incredibly depressing, because I love the glowing Apple logo. Uh, it's super shiny now, and you get a touch bar like that, which is cool, but no more glowing Apple logo.